Do you want to start? No. So <laughs> we got the winning bid for a 47 foot uh, katana. Uh, 2015 and we were not really expecting to get this winning bid but we did you we know 48 hours oh yeah. business days to make the decision I'm flying out at 8 o'clock this is the first time you're hearing about the times tomorrow morning from Denver to Norfolk Virginia I'm gonna rent a car to go down to um, Wachesi it's actually Wan Chi's uh, my apologies to those that live in the Outer Banks. The boat was dropped off of its, and this is the first time you're hearing about this, was dropped off of its uh, stands and the bulkheads are broke. So. <laughs> so what I appreciate about Christy here is not just the facial reaction, but the delay and then the facial reaction. Let's watch that again. And the bulkheads are broke. So, <laughs> and it's bolt, broken bulkheads. So, so. When did you hear about this? I heard about it. Wait, when did you hear about this? Today? The broken bulkheads? Yeah. Yeah, just today. So, they didn't share that before? Not unnamed salvage auction company. I contacted the yard that is holding it, and they said, uh, yeah, it has uh, broken bulkheads with an S. So right now we're just shy of two years out from when we would initially go. But the goal was to have like the buying of the boat and the selling of the house be relatively, you know, relatively quick, you know, or short timelines. So there's going to be a fair amount of loan on this thing uh, for a couple of years, uh, but that'll get us maybe time to continue to get um, more comfortable on a boat that size. I got to find a place that we want to store this marina. Price quotes basically over the weekend, and I got to find out uh, if we can get insurance. A fourth, possibly set up an LLC and purchase this boat as a business rather than a personal uh, purchase. We will not make a decision till Monday and that'll give me all weekend. I'm only the only one flying out, so I'll be FaceTiming her. We've never been even on a Katana. Um, and- I'm concerned about driving this boat. I'm very concerned about the helms. Yeah, the helms look like they're pretty exposed. There's a number of things that we gotta make sure that we you know, we want this boat, but at the price point, this boat, you know, fixed up, it's a, it's a substantial boat. I am very concerned because we're already coming in close to our max budget. So our more recent max budget, uh -huh. and there's significant repairs. Well, I'm done. Okay, good job. I let go. In a little bit. So, I don't know. I think let's get some dinner and let's decide. And I guess we got some work to do. We got a lot of work to do. The weekend I went out was quite the whirlwind. Um, by the time I got there, everybody was closed. So I went around to anybody at the marina that was working on their boat saying, if you got 10 minutes and want to come over to my boat and uh, take a look at it, uh, I'll give you $40 to, to get your advice on fixing it up. I got enough people that thought that it could get fixed up pretty easily that uh, I felt pretty good about it. Also got a hold of the previous owners and they were, uh, and still to this day, remain great people and very helpful. You know, this picture was uh, actually on the boat when I got there and I, I had done my research on the cost to, to fix up boats. This boat had, you know, one major problem, but other than that, it was an exceptional boat. And I spent a little over the last year researching boat prices and there was no way we were going to be able to find a boat of this quality uh, in our price range. So when Monday rolled around, Christy and I talked about it one last time. We wired the money, and uh, now uh, we became owners of that uh, Katana 47. But before we would start work on our Katana, uh, we decided that we would book a charter and uh, sail the BVIs to try to make sure that Quitting our job and sailing the world as a family was something we all really wanted to do. We call this the litmus test. Can we do it with the kids? Does anybody get seasick? Our boat. My babe. My other babe. Yahana. And the baby. Captain on a boat this size, and 
toss it around. Yeah, it turns out you really need to know the uh, uh, buoys and what they mean. I think it's been amazing. Like, uh, you know, it's 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 harder than I would have expected as far as just like living in close quarters and you got this million dollar boat that is not yours, that is going to be like crash and people are gonna die. And so like there's stress, but. It's but... funny because that doesn't stress me out at all. <laughs> <laughs> what stresses me is the organization is hard. Okay. But I feel like we finally got our groove and we only have three days left. I know. I know we've been we had four. It took six days to get in our groove. <laughs> Hi. Bye. While we were in the British Virgin Islands, we saw this Katana 47 uh, floating by, and two things became clear. Our adventure was going to be a lot harder than we expected, but it was also going to be a lot more special than we hoped. Chartered for 11 days. Uh, just before this, flew into Fort Lauderdale, where the rest of the family went to Colorado Springs. I went to North Carolina, got into Raleigh at midnight. Uh, last night, uh, there was a soccer tournament, so there was no hotels in Raleigh, so I had to get about an hour out of uh, Raleigh, North Carolina. Uh, found a hotel at a day's end, which smelled horrible, but the bed was comfortable, or maybe I was just like really tired. Did laundry, got groceries, Bed's made up. I'm about ready to call the family and go to bed and start bright and early, kind of getting stuff organized first, then start uh, plasticking stuff off. So we'll see how that goes. So I got my roll over here, my table. When the boat fell off its stands, the outer shell of the boat bent, creating the inner support structures called string boards or bulkheads to crack and break. Those are gonna to need to be ground out where the cracks are and refilled or entirely cut out and replaced. And in order to do that, I'm gonna be sanding and cutting carbon fiber, which will create airborne shards of glass that will get all over myself, as well as all over every single section of the boat. So it's important to plastic in as much of the boat as possible to contain the contaminants so I can vacuum them out and clean the boat up. Everything. And I've got, what is this? This is the port hull, all plasticed in. This is the, fo uh, the forward cabin and then the aft cabin back there, which is where I'm sleeping. Um, taped everything up uh, best I could and gonna be grinding away at some of the cracked the cracks, um, maybe today, but certainly tomorrow. We'll show you what I'm doing on the starboard side. And so starboard is all pretty gutted uh, still. You can see the walls uh, all on the outer walls on the starboard side have all been removed. This is where, this is where the, um, um, Dagger board, dagger board goes. So I've already started in on the bathroom here, plasticking in here, and then I'm just gonna go all the way around. I have plasticed everything in, as you can see, it's getting later at night. Um, and um, I'm trying to get everything prepped so that way tomorrow I can put on the suit and just start grinding away all day. Now, there's one spot that's just particularly gnarly. What I gotta do is get this stuff pushed out of the way so I can get access. Um, because unplugging all that stuff and uh, running it through is just, is just a, um, I, I wanna see if I can avoid that and, and still get access to what I need by just pushing it away. So in order to do that, 
I'm going to make some room for myself by removing this box. Uh, the here. next five days entailed a lot of removing sections of the boat and grinding or cutting out sections. Uh, it was pretty nasty work and I didn't get a lot of it on camera, but uh, we'll get that for you next time. I ended up getting a hotel because the carbon fiber dust was so bad you could just smell it in the air and I didn't want to be inhaling it all night. So uh, it also got all over me, as you can see here. Hoping I don't itch too bad tonight. When I got home, I decided to make a makeshift uh, haul to practice a lot of the rebuilding work that I would be doing next time. I was really happy I did and in that I'm doing a lot of this work myself because it became very obvious that it's pretty easy to cover up bad work and uh, I wanted to get my mistakes out of the way with something that uh, didn't really matter. I'm gonna put this carbon fiber on, uh, then put the glue or uh, the vacuum bag system on and see how it adheres because this is the plan to do on, on the boat and if I screw up, I'd rather screw up here. product was admittedly pretty sloppy, but the whole process taught me quite a bit. Well, my friends had their septic pump uh, replaced. And you see it back over there. Gonna use it on the boat. That's the thing, as like an emergency backup, uh, backup pump. I've already cleaned it, already sanitized it. I put a little bit of soap in here for some bubbles. And uh, yeah, gonna see how this goes. Oh yeah. I think it'll work as an emergency backup. Please like, subscribe, and check out our Patreon page where you can support these videos. Next time, I will be quitting my job as a teacher, heading back to North Carolina, and Christy will be staying home with the kids while continuing her job as a physical therapist.